sure I was here just a minute ago. <laughs> that was a nice one. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, good morning again. And happy Mother's Day. You've got a, there's a lovely morning tea up there I'm going to have to help you eat. Um, we've got cupcakes and scones and biscuits and we just want to honour the ladies and mothers this morning. Do you want a message well? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we've got hecklers. <laughs> and and for, you, for you today, uh, that Mother's Day is a struggle or it's difficult, we want to just acknowledge that as well. And uh, but we want to honour the ladies today. What about that? Isn't that a good idea? So we honour all the ladies and mums here this morning with morning tea as well. So that'll be good. I'm going to pray and then we're going to get into the message this morning. Father God, we thank you that you hear our prayer. Lord, as a church community, we just want to acknowledge you, that you are God. We thank you for the joys of life. We thank you that you meet us in the struggles of life. And Lord, this Mother's Day, we do thank you for our mums. Lord, as we open your word today, I pray that you just speak to us from the pages of Scripture this morning. As we consider... This message that you've laid on my heart today, Lord, may it encourage us, may it inspire us, may we hear from you, Lord, not my words, but yours. So, Lord, over these next few moments, let us do that. May our hearts be open, may our ears be attentive, Lord God, we pray. Bless all those this morning who have a need or a struggle, Lord. For those that may be hurting, for those that need an answer prayer for those that may be missing loved ones today because it is Mother's Day. Whatever the situation, Lord, you, you meet us there. So Lord, bless us, we pray, as we receive your word this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. This morning I'm speaking about Lot's wife. We don't know her name. We don't know what she looked like. We don't even know what she really had to say. Maybe you're thinking there's not a lot we could say about that. <laughs> yeah, I've got lots of them. Yeah. <laughs> or there's not a lot we can say about her. But she comes and she speaks to us from the pages of Scripture. And if you have no idea what I'm speaking about or who this lady is, by the end of the message you will know the story. In Luke chapter 17, it will be up on the screen there for you. It talks about Jesus referring to the time in the Old Testament when Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. It was the same in the days of Lot. People were eating and drinking, buying and selling, planting and building. But the day Lot left Sodom, a fire and sulfur rained down from heaven and destroyed them all. It will be just like this on the day that the Son of Man is revealed. On that day, no one who is on the housetop with possessions inside shall go down to get them. Likewise, no one who is in the field should go back for anything. Remember Lot's wife. Whoever tries to keep their life will lose it. Whoever loses their life will preserve it. Jesus says to us, remember Lot's wife. Okay. Did she turn into a pillar of salt? Not much to remember. But she comes and speaks to us from the pages of Scripture. The words of Jesus are a warning to us. We need to understand this. Remember Lot's wife. Keep moving forward. Don't look back. This lady is basically invisible in the scriptures. She's not a prophet like Anna, not a judge like Deborah. She wasn't the mother of King David. She didn't carry a prince in her womb. 
She's not particularly godly or prayerful or faithful. We can't quote anything that she said. Lot's wife is a nameless woman and her story is left untold. Do you feel at times that you don't have a voice? Do you feel at times that your story is unheard and untold? Do you struggle with your identity? Do you go unnoticed and unappreciated? It's Mother's Day. Let's not forget those important women and ladies in our lives. Let us appreciate them and thank them. I'll get my page, I'll be right. They're sticking together. Must be this cool morning. As a church community, as brothers and sisters in Christ, God has given us a voice and an identity. It's a voice of truth. It's a voice of righteousness as we be people of hope and purpose. Don't feel you have nothing to say or nothing to do. Don't feel like your life doesn't matter because it matters to God, it matters to me, and it matters to us as a church community. Now, Lot was a good man, but he had a few issues. He fed and helped and protected the Lord's angels who came to warn him about the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah and to save his family. God held back that destruction so Lot and his family could escape and they would be safe. This story is in Genesis chapter 19 and I'm going to pick it up at verse 10 and you can read along. But the men inside reached out and pulled Lot back into his house and shut the door. Then they struck the men who were at the door of his house, young and old, with blindness, so they could not find the door. The two men said to Lot, Do you have anyone else here, son-in-law, sons or daughters, or anyone else in the city who belongs to you? Get them out of here, because we are going to destroy this place. The outcry of the Lord against its people is so great that he has sent us to destroy it. So Lot went out and spoke to his son-in-law, sons-in-law, who were pledged to marry his daughters. He said to them, hurry and get out of this place, because the Lord is about to destroy this city. But the son-in-laws thought he was joking. With the coming of dawn, the angels urged Lot, saying, Hurry, hurry, take, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, or you'll be swept away when the city is punished. When he hesitated, the men grasped his hand and, and the hands of his wife and his two daughters and led them safely out of the city, for the Lord was merciful to them. As soon as they had brought them out, one of them said, Flee for your lives. Don't look back. And don't stop anywhere in the plain. Flee to the mountains or you will be swept away. But Lot said to them, No, my lords, please, your servant has found favour in your eyes. And you've shown great kindness to me in sparing my life. But I can't flee to the mountains. This disaster will overtake me and I'll die. Look, here is a town near enough to run to, and it's small. Let me flee to it. It is very small, isn't it? Then my life will be spared. He said to them, very well, I'll grant this request too. I'll not overthrow the town you speak of, but flee quickly there because I cannot do anything until you reach it. That's why the town is called Zora. By this time, Lot reached Zorah. By the time reached, Lot reached Zorah, the sun had risen over the land. Then the Lord rained down burning sulfur on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. Thus he overthrew those cities and the entire plain, destroying all those living in the cities and all the vegetation in the land. But Lot's wife looked back and she became a pillar of Salt. Now Lot doesn't have much substance, but God chose to protect him and his family. 
God mentions his wife as they're fleeing the city. There she is. She appears. Lot's wife. Ta-da! But she turns back. Sodom and Gomorrah, a place of immorality, lust and sex and sin. People full of their own empty desires. And God destroyed that place. Let us be ready. Ready for what? I'm fine, I don't need to change, I don't need to do anything, I don't need to be challenged, I'm comfortable here, all's good. Let's get ourselves ready for God's opportunity. For when he says go, go. When he says move, move. When he says turn, turn. When he says take a step, step. God gave Lot, his wife and children, an opportunity. An opportunity to escape. An opportunity to be free of destruction. He gives us one too. Let's be ready and prepared for it. The problem with Lot's wife wasn't that she missed Missed it and messed up her opportunity because she escaped and she moved forward. She wasn't so bad. Was she also foolish? Because God saw something in her that he saved her life as well. She was nearly there. You and I make choices every day. Lot's wife got out. She took that step. But she didn't follow through. So the question is not, am I good enough? Am I righteous enough? Have I heard from God properly? <coughs> God sees something in us that is special and real. And says, hey, I've got your life. Step forward with me. We would not be where we are today without the hand of God upon our life. And yes, there's been bumps and twists and turns in the road. But now we must decide what to do with the opportunities that God brings our way. God's over here waiting. He has saved you and I, and He set us free, and He's placed us here today, <coughs> and He has plans and purposes for our life, and His hand comes outstretched to us. Lot's wife is leaving with her family. She's focused. She's on her way to safety. Her life is spared. Her eyes are forward. She's moving ahead, but she looks back and loses her life, her destiny, her purpose. Gone. She misses out on so many opportunities. Transformed into a pillar of salt. Sadly, she was nearly there, so close. So close. I know Christians like that. They have enough faith to get out. They have enough faith to follow Jesus and to make a change. They still have many things in their past that they can't embrace their future. The step seems too big. The journey too hard. Some of us need to stop looking back. Because spiritually, maybe we're a pillar of salt. Maybe we're a bit dry and crusty and stuck. Maybe a bit lifeless, not moving. Jesus reminds us of salt in Matthew 5, 13 and 14. You are the salt of the earth. But if salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. 
You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Friends, don't live your life looking back. When God pulls you out, when he comes to your rescue, move forward quickly. Lot's wife was at a physical place, but she wasn't prepared mentally. Her body had escaped, but her mind and thoughts were still back there. Back in the smoky rubble of that city. Her situation changed, but her attitude had not. She was divided against herself, and this is a dangerous place. I don't feel she fully appreciated what God was doing for her. You're free. She could not see or enjoy the change because the pull of the past was so great. What about us? Don't lose your joy. Don't lose your passion. Don't lose your focus. God is giving us an opportun opportunities to minister, to share His hope and salvation. The future might be an unfamiliar place at first. But let us hold on. Let us hold on. Don't ignore his opportunities. Because your attitude is still tied up in the past. Philippians chapter 3 from the Message Bible. Friends, don't get me wrong. By no means do I count myself an expert in all of this. But I've got my eye on the goal. Where God is beckoning us onward to Jesus. I'm off and running and I'm not turning back. I'm off and running, friends. I'm not turning back. This lady's problem wasn't that her mind refused to accept the blessings of God for her and her family, but she was, but sadly she wasn't able to fully experience the future God had for her. Embrace the future, even though it may be unknown, even though it may be scary, even though it may be hard. Seize that opportunity that God has for you and God has for me and let us not look back. My final scripture today is from Acts 17, verse 26 and 27. From one man he made all the nations, that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did, God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. Wherever you sit today, God is not too far away. God has put it all together. God has called your name. I pray that you discover him. I pray you take that step and you move forward with eyes focused on the goal and the prize. And we'll be a church that's innovating. And we'll be a church that's obedient. And we'll be a church that is effective for his glory. As we share the living hope that we have in Jesus Christ. God bless you. Amen.